Hey everyone, today we'll talk about two essential tools for me, the SimHub control remapper and the LED profiles from Daniel Newman Racing. Since you seem to like this more conversational style of videos, I thought we'll do more of them. Uh, in the end, for me, it's easy to make those. And for you, that means more content. So we'll just keep going with that, at least for the more tutorial style, like tools, videos and stuff like that. But yeah, we'll start with the SimHub control remapper. What is it? Basically, it creates a virtual joystick that you can map in game then and lets you hot swap wheels. And not only that, like for example, games like iRacing that don't have profiles, you will not have to reassign all the buttons when you use a different wheel. So where is it? Typically it's not shown. So you wanna go to settings, plugins, and then control mapper, make sure this is enabled and set to show in left menu. And if you do that, you should get this thing called control mapper. This will be disabled when you first launch it. There are two possibilities to use it, either VJoy, that is like a little software that installs on your PC and basically creates a virtual joystick. I did have occasional issues with VJoy in the past, so what I'm using and what I would recommend is use the bridge mode. By that you will basically flash an Arduino as a joystick and that acts basically as the translator between wheel and game. Those Arduinos are super cheap and something that I can recommend is like get maybe one of those like these that come with a USB connector so you just plug it in your PC you forget it you flash the firmware onto it and you're good to go. This one is a bit more pricey like 12 euros you can get these for like three or four euros just search on Amazon I can leave the link to this one here in the description below but like any Arduino that uses the 80 mega 32 U4 will do the job just fine. So basically plug the Arduino in click flash update bridge firmware then make sure you have the correct COM port. Ideally, launch this dialog with the Arduino disconnected, then connect it, click refresh ports list and see which COM port was added. In my case, it's COM port 12. So select this one and then you can select either a single controller or triple controller. Like if you need more than 128 inputs, then you can also do triple controllers, but um, we'll do single here. Just uh, check this box, click flash version 1.2. And that's it. If we now look in the USB device tree, we'll see the unknown SimHub controller remapper bridge COM port 12 and HID device. So this is now visible as a joystick in the Windows thingy here. Okay, next thing is you can create this list here. I just like, I need to update this because it's not complete and it's a little bit messy, but pretty much you go to assign roles and then you can basically generate all the virtual buttons that you ever want to use, like shift up, shift down, flash, DRS, brake bias, plus, minus, traction control, whatever. You can put whatever you want in there. And then you can see, for example, the hyper I have already mapped to these buttons, but I have a different wheel connected here right now. So I'll show you the options, how you do that. Basically go to add new source controller and then this is the cube controls GTX2. So we'll select this one, press OK. And then we go to map controller. And here we get tons of options. Basic stuff, shift up, I mean, click it, use the button that you want to use for shift up, shift down, flash. DRS, whatever, Delta, you get the idea. But there are more options than just this mapping. So for example, there's this thing called FN1 button. What does that do? You can assign a button on your steering wheel. Let's use this arrow to the left here. And this will basically shift all buttons to another layer. For example, I want to shift down with this button and the shift up. It doesn't really make any sense, but you basically get a second functionality for every button. So if I click the shift up, now you see it's shifting up. And if I click this button, this is the special function one button now, click this and then shift up, it will be shift down. Like I said, this example doesn't make any sense, but you get the idea. It basically gives you a second layer for every button. But not only that, let's clear this for now because I mean, I don't know what to do with tons of buttons, but there are also functionalities called input filter. What is that? You can assign different buttons to a button, no, different functionality to a button, depending on whether you press it short, long, latching to momentary, momentary to latching, when pressed, when released or inverted. So let's say you want to use one button for ignition and starter. So ignition will be the skull button with a long press and starter with a short press. And if we look at what that is doing, so if I click this just shortly, you will see we are 
using the starter functionality. And if I click it long, it will toggle the ignition on and off quickly. This is just like if you use any of these functions, it will send a short pulse, but not hold the button if you hold it because the software somehow has to determine like whether it's a short press or long press and it cannot like send the short press before detecting, ah, but it's a long press. Well, there's just like some logic behind it that doesn't let you allow to use a button with that functionality to hold, like don't use this for voice chat or something. But I think this tool is insanely powerful. I have not seen many people use it. I mean, I only recently started using it as well and give it a try. I think it's great. I can highly recommend to use an Arduino with it. And also another tool that I can recommend because the problem is this will create a second joystick but this joystick is still available. So if I go into a game and for example, press the shift up button, the game will see the shift up from the SimHub tool and the shift up from the game. There are several workarounds for this. First of all, there's a Stream Deck integration. You can install the plugin and then for example, create buttons on your Stream Deck for shift up, shift down, and then use these buttons to assign the in-game roles. I think that is probably the easiest way. It's a little bit of effort to create all the buttons on the Stream Deck as well. But the plus side is you can put it on a folder and if there's something you forgot to map a button on your wheel but you need the functionality it will be on the stream deck for example here if i go shift up on the stream deck now um you can see this works as well another possibility is there's a little website that you can open on your smartphone just scan the qr code on your phone and then you can use the control mapper it looks like this so it gives you all the functionality that you created in this control remapper and then for example if you want to map the shift up in the game you will just open it on your phone and click the simulate here and then it will send the shift up without sending the shift up on the steering wheel as well or the last possibility <laughs> that i want to talk about is what i use it's called hid height and what that software is doing it basically hides the joystick from the games so here you can see this Cube Controls GTX, for example, is enabled right now. And it has this lock icon or whatever it's supposed to be, I don't know, like this red icon. And that means that the HID height is enabled. And the only two tools that are allowed to see the steering wheel is obviously HID height and SimHub. So SimHub can process the inputs, but the game doesn't see the wheel. And by that, you can just like, once you mapped all the buttons here, uh, you can just go into the game and map the buttons as if it's the native implementation. I quickly show you how it works in the game as well. Let's do it with ACC because ACC is really, really like picky when it comes to attaching wheels and removing wheels. And then if your wheel disconnects, you need to restart the session because the game doesn't see the joystick anymore, stuff like that. So if we now go to the controller section in ACC, assign the button, and you see shift up is now not the cube controls gtx but it's the sim hub controller remapper bridge shift down for example if i use the stream deck um you see i can now shift up and down with the stream deck i can shift up and down with the cube controls wheel or even stuff like for example you're in the game so let's say you maybe you're driving in the game you have a problem with your steering wheel or you want to change the wheel mid-session for whatever reason just like to simulate this, this scenario that your wheel disconnects, it can happen, it shouldn't happen, but it can happen sometimes. And on ACC, it's really, really bad. But pretty much in this case, I can even switch out the wheels. And you see, it works just fine with the Hyper as well, even though it is not mapped to it, it is mapped to the SimHub control remapper and yeah, I mean, you get the idea. Hot swappable wheels, especially useful combined with the QR that I'm developing right now. It's the final prototype and I still need to see how I can make it available for people. I will probably like give access to all YouTube members, uh, just become a member and join the Discord. It should automatically sync up, um, but yeah, more details on that soon. But yeah, that is the SimHub control remapper. Insanely useful. I should have started using this way earlier. Like, I don't remember how often I reassigned buttons and everything because I was just too lazy to set that up. But well, we are finally there and I thought everybody should know about it because it's really, really useful. Then another thing I want to talk about is LED profiles. There's a new guy in the scene 
he's not new, but like he's putting more effort into the whole thing as of lately. And his name is Daniel Newman. And he basically, he has the best LED profiles for pretty much any wheel on the market. Whether you want colored themes, like for example, for the GSI wheels, like the Hyper, for example, Hyper P1, Hyper SL, uh, X29 are supported, or just like generic profiles for this, for example. I'll show it to you with the Hyper profile because that's more powerful. Okay, so what you want to do is head over to danielnewmanracing.com and then basically go to downloads. And there you can see all the different download profiles. Some are for members. Like if you like the profiles, always consider to support the creator. Um, but there's also tons of free stuff. So for example, for wheel button LED profiles, like these are the wheels that he is currently supporting, like the Usher Artura range, the USB version, obviously, Rexing, then GSI wheels, the X29 and the two Hyper wheels and also Cube Controls wheels. So we have the P1 here, so we'll go and download this one. But also what you can do is if you don't have a wheel that is supported or if you have a wheel that just has shift lights for example then you can head over to the rpm led section here so let's say you have three leds on the sides um, then you want to go to the 3xx3 section and then depending on how many leds you have in the middle there are profiles available for 10 11 12 13 14 15 16 and also different versions for four LEDs on the sides, five on the sides, and also like for older wheels that have no LEDs on the sides, for example, like 0, 16, 0, like just, what the hell is this, 9, 3, 10, 3, 9. Okay, anyways, like there's basically an LED profile for nearly every scenario, but we'll have a look at the Hyper P1 profile here. To install it, very, very simply, go into SimHub, Go to the wheel that you want to install it on and typically this is something you want to put into the individual LED folder. If it's for the whole wheel, I mean if it's just RGB LEDs for the shift lights then obviously it would go in here. But pretty much go to import profile or to wherever you exported this LED profile and then just import it. And then you already see, for example, now we have a gradient on it and where that is coming from there's a config file as well. You can basically just generate your own one. It's it's super cool. Like there's a configurator on the website that lets you create this file. I mean, obviously you can also just like edit it with a text editor of your choice. But if you think that is a scary, then you can use this, for example. There are several options for the LED profiles. For example, the lovely dashboard behavior with true dark mode, like the LEDs will dim, change colors. I don't know. I, I don't use the true dark mode, but for example, here, this will switch to a red theme or you can set like blue, purple, orange and there's a hotkey to go into this true dark mode you can enable it here. I think ACC or one of the games also have automatic true dark mode but I'm not sure about that. Like I said I don't really use this. Then you can set up the generic RPM style left to right or left to right three segments meet in the middle F1 style or left to right gradient kind of a little bit similar to the salt pack stuff but uh, for ACC and for iRacing super cool it actually mimics all the cars leds perfectly like it's a perfect replica i think daniel is using uh the data from you for iRacing and then created his own data for acc tons of effort like do not underestimate how much work this is like i i tried it once for one car and i gave up but <laughs> super grateful that there are people that do this stuff so big thank you to you and to daniel for making this everything else that is not acc or iRacing there's also a generic profile in here so it works with any game it will just not have perfect replica in that but also these led profiles get updates so quickly uh, i wouldn't be surprised if there's support for lmu in, in a few days maybe um, but yeah, then you can also enable and disable flags, spotter, pit lane indicator. Like you see, there's tons of stuff in here with easy customization. It's really freaking amazing. Then there are themes, for example, the wheel menu color and the wheel game color. You can set different themes. For example, let's say you want to have like pretty gradient overlays while you're in the menu or like outside of the game. Then you can select like a different theme, for example, purple for the menu. And then while you're in the game, you maybe want a more basic theme, just like yellow. I mean, as if yellow is more basic than purple, but you get the idea. There's also a theme that matches the lovely dashboard. It's kind of like very colorful, <laughs> not really my taste, but uh, Try them out, great profiles in here. And once you're done configurating all this, you can go to download file. It will create a JSON file. Just uh, go to the download folder, 
and grab that file and you want to copy it into C or whatever you install Simhub, C program files, in my case Simhub and then JavaScript extensions and then the Daniel Newman Racing settings.json. If you created the file and you want to change something, you can also do it in the text file. It's doing exactly the same thing. It just looks less pretty. But yeah, once you've done that and you hop into the game, let's actually go into ACC again because iRacing is having a downtime right now, so I can't show you. But you see, for example, now in the menu, I have this um, Miami theme, I think, going on. I mean, you can hardly see it on the camera because cameras and LEDs of steering wheels, not a very good match. Let's hop, for example, into the McLaren 720S Evo. And you'll see when we are in the car, we already get the, the fancy pit lane or pit limiter animation. And then now we are on the purple theme because I selected that for the game LED profile to use. And you see the LEDs will pretty much, I mean, it has more LEDs than the car, it's slightly different. Like that, I mean, if you have a, a wheel with the same amount of LEDs as the real one, there will probably be a perfect replica. But all the color segments and everything matches with the car in game. And that is, like I said, for ACC and iRacing. And it's freaking awesome if you like to have that. I typically, I like to run one LED profile for all cars so I can get used to it. Um, but many, many people want the, the LEDs in-game and wheel to match and I think the profiles from Daniel Newman are your best bet for that. But yeah, that's um, pretty much it for the video already. I can now shift with my with my stream deck here. So if, if your wheel breaks completely, for example, and you still have to finish your race and you still have your stream deck, you can do that. <laughs> but yeah, that's it for the video. LED profiles, SimHub control, remapper. Check them out. I think insanely good tools. If you like, Maybe buy a SimHub license or become a member on Daniel Newman's Ko-Fi. And yeah, if you liked the video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel to not miss any future videos. And I hope to see you all in the next one. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.